In this video, we're going to talk about strategies for positioning sources in your work. We're then going to talk about specific strategies for positioning sources within an actual paragraph. As you're scanning through your articles and taking notes, start to think about where they might fit within your argument. While incorporating sources into your work is both an individual and unique process, there are definitely some generalized patterns that you might want to consider to jumpstart the writing process. We're going to look at four common patterns that have been used to incorporate sources into your work that were proposed by Wellington. Sometimes in your work it can be useful to start by giving some broader context to your research question or topic, and then in stages narrowing it down to your ultimate research question. This is known as the zooming model. On the other hand, you can also start with your very specific question and then move outward. Other times you'll focus on three or four core areas of the literature and focus your analysis on where they intersect. This is one of the most common ways of incorporating sources into writing. Patchworking requires a lot of creativity on the part of the writer, as you have to weave together parts of the literature that don't necessarily overlap. However, you still need to find some way to navigate them and piece them together in, in some form of patchworking pattern. Funneling is similar to zooming, as it allows you to start with a wide topic area and then focus in on one particular question or topic, but without the stages that are used in zooming. Now that we've considered incorporating sources into the overall structure of your argument, let's have a look at incorporating sources into an actual paragraph. During our undergraduate studies, most of us were probably guilty of incorporating quotations without giving any explanation and letting the quote speak directly for itself. As a graduate student, you have higher expectations and you need to think critically about how you integrate your sources. For example, if you're including a quotation, you also need to include a rationale for why you've included it. Here's some questions that you might want to consider when you're thinking about incorporating your sources. First, consider the authority of the source. Who wrote it? Why was it written? How is this person an expert in the area? And what is his or her expertise in the area? Next, you might want to think about the credibility of the source. Where is it published? Does it refer to other research? Is it just an opinion? Does the author offer substantial evidence? When was it written? And is it still relevant? Last, you might want to think about the purpose of the citation. How will you use the citation? And how will it help prove your point or further your argument? These are all important questions to ask before you incorporate your citations. After you've incorporated them, comes the time for the proper analysis. Here's some questions that you might want to consider. What's the meaning of the citation? and what are its broader implications for your argument or thesis? What's the relevance of the citation to your thesis? For example, does it support it or go counter to it? What's the broader significance of the citation? When you're analyzing a citation that you've incorporated, one of the best questions to ask is, so what? Thanks very much for watching, and please join us for the next video in the series.